Okay, so um, not quite as fancy slides here, but we've, we've also been focusing quite a lot on web-based learning. This actually has very deep roots, been gently revamping the research methods one course over, I think, particularly the last year to make it very, very student-led. And we've suffered in the past all the problems that associate with research methods teaching that students work at very different paces, they have very different abilities, and by giving them more point of need support, it has had quite a dramatic influence. So compared to the original teaching from the front, then demonstrating the stats and then getting them to do some stuff after the event, we've taken a very computer-mediated approach. So they do most of their work up in the labs. Um, <coughs> workshops very student-led to the point that we've developed worksheets and standalone resources that they work through, but in the presence of demonstrators such as myself and Kieran, who can then come running over at the point that they need additional support to assimilate the material. Uh, we tend to use data sets, so it's very practical, it's very hands-on. We just we get them stuck into the data straight off with instructions of what to do next, and we come along and help them out. Uh, we also use Moodle quizzes, which, as I'm sure you're aware, have the benefit of providing instant feedback on whether they're, whether they're getting it or not. Uh, another thing that I think actually makes a huge difference is that we repeat the analyses. So in a workshop on, say, ANOVA, we might have, say, four data sets. So they don't just get to go through ANOVA and get to the end. They get to go back and repeat. And then they can assess for themselves how much they've understood, whether they need additional support or talking through the concepts. And it's often quite empowering to students. I was talking in one of the earlier sessions about this student that was very, very unconfident, and then she did the workshop, the yeah, next data set. I just remember saying, I got it, I, I understood that. And it was very revelatory, because often we just hustle people through analyses, and they don't quite feel like they've assimilated. So this, this repetition, this very hands-on, active learning-based approach seems to be really working for yeah, certainly most of the students that I've talked to. <coughs> So yes, worksheets are provided. We've got a little slide just with some examples of that. Um, <clears throat> the most important thing here is students working at their own pace. I mean, we were finding that when we did traditional, talk them through it, even show it on the projector at the front, that half of the students would have done it already, got bored, switched off. The other half wouldn't be able to keep up. So by freeing ourselves from that, by giving them the resources to work at their own pace, it's made a tremendous difference to us. So a lot of the teaching, a lot of the, the workshop-based teaching is hands-on, it's student-led, and it's working through these data sets with support. We also give them weekly assessments, just checks of whether they've assimilated some of the core concepts. Um, obviously, to pass the weekly assessments, they not only draw on the practical hands-on material, but they also draw on theoretical material. And George Giorgio actually has done some amazing animated lectures that they can access. Um, <coughs> either before they come to the workshop and do the workshop material, or I'm actually a great fan of people assimilating concepts afterwards. I think once they've done a bit of analysis, sometimes it's more of a space to re-engage with this what's an over about anyway. Um, <coughs> good thing about this, of course, is that students can watch and re-watch. So if they watched it the once and they didn't get it, they can actually re-watch it a number of times. They can go back and redo any of the workshop exercises. Um, and they can go back, obviously, and access the, the worksheets if they ever need a quick how to do an ANOVA. Anything to add, Kieran? Yeah, I, I think if we go on to the next slide, we can actually see some examples of that. So obviously, we don't have a huge... Yeah, the, the course in itself has kind of really shifted the emphasis and focus, and it's been quite quite a question of integrating all of these things together and we don't have a huge amount of time to talk about all the things we can possibly talk about. So we're going to focus on the, this, this method of uh, using data sets and using hands-on analyses in the class as a, the core engine for them learning their stats. And we have here a, a sample worksheet. As you can see, it's got a screen capture. It just leads them through the entire process. I'm quite proud of my little worksheet. So. <laughs> screen capture. And we also, you can see um, where we've got the stats. That there's, it, it's very step by step. Yeah, the blue bit goes in here. The red bit goes in here. This is how you might write it up. So it's quite, yeah, it's quite self-explanatory. Also solves the problem, of course, with students 
for maybe missed some stuff or the need to backtrack. Um, there's an example of one of the Moodle quizzes up here where they're then expected to do something with that information. <coughs> So they obtain an analysis. Uh, do you want to add anything, Kieran? Um, well, <coughs> I think maybe we've gone to the next bit. I mean, it's all well and good us going on about how much better this, this way of working is, and we were sort of thinking we were really you know, proud of this sort of student-led way of working instead of standing up the front just demonstrating how to use SPSS. So we've done some sort of pre preliminary analyses just to kind of get an idea whether there's some kind of... Uh, improvement maybe in performance based on that. Now, what we haven't got here, we haven't got last year's assessment marks. I think the assessment changed somewhat from previous year anyway, so it's not necessarily, we can't necessarily compare grades in the same way that um, uh, Chris could just now as easily. But actually, one of the things we can say is actually just by looking at the number of workshop exercises, these are the Moodle based exercises with the worksheets um, connected to them, just by having a look at the engagement data there, you can see there's, you know, there's obviously clear. The, the students who are engaging more with the, um, uh, with the number of exercises, there is increased improvement. Uh, what this is up the side, this is actually the grade for their final report. Now, obviously, in the absence of some kind of pure control group like last year's um, report grade based on the previous way of working, it may be, maybe we can't necessarily infer like a directly causal link here. But what we can say is it does seem like higher engagement, there is some kind of link with you know, higher grades going on there. Okay? So it, it certainly gives us an, an idea that there is some kind of use, use for it. It's actually potentially useful there. Can um, I just yeah. add something quickly here? Um, you notice that this flat line is between 0% completed and um, 1 to 4, so up to 50%. That would also include people that just go through one of the workshop exercises, go, OK, that sort of got that and people that do this kind of repetition cycle, whether then open the next data set, you know, fire it into their, their understanding a bit more. So that, and there is a massive jump. Now, obviously, there could be additional confounding variables like the student's general level of motivation. We have actually done some more extensive questionnaire stuff you know, around the course that should give us some answers on, on other things like that. But it does seem to indicate on the, on the first pass that if they engage with this cycle, it's having quite a radical influence on, uh, on performance. OK, so just the last slide about that. Yeah, just um, yeah, to be pulled cool to the end. Uh, as Becky just said, we are doing some extra um, analyses that looking at extra things like confound, such as motivation, uh, different interests, maybe that sort of thing that might have an impact on it. And we also want to get some evaluations of the material to see whether people actually are you know, liking it. Uh, also, there's other, Moodle is a real resource. You know, it's full of loads of different information, frequency of access, time of access. You can find out all that sort of information that can be put into SPSS and analysed quite easily. And then we can also look at games on SPSS and see if that's also a use in terms of, um, you know, like the workshop exercises. That's it. Thank you. Thank you both ever so much.